Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review the new version of The Beguiled, written and directed by Sofia Coppola. Yes, that Sofia Coppola was a terrible actress, but turned out to be a very talented filmmaker. What do you know? Just like her dad. And this film is a remake of an adaptation of a novel. The original 1971 version had Clint Eastwood in it, and I recently watched it on HBO Go to prep for this movie. I really, really enjoyed that movie to the point where I was so intrigued and enthralled by just the experience of watching that film. And I was interested to see where this movie took me. And I didn't like it as much, but I still really enjoyed this film and got a lot out of it. In terms of the storytelling, it's very... There's a lot left up to interpretation in this film. And Sofia Coppola does that on purpose and doesn't give you all the information or motivation. And on some level, it's a bit frustrating because at some point when all comes said and done, it's like, who do I really care about or support in this film towards the end? But also makes it intriguing because you don't really know what's going on, who's playing who, are they really playing? Are they actually feeling these things? And in terms of pacing, the first third of this felt like it lacked energy, and that's not good for a film. You can be slow paced, but you can instill energy in a shot. It Comes at Night, that I saw this year, one of my favorite films of the year so far, embodied that. With how the shots were, and everything, and how they were held, and how they were brought to life, was done in such a craftful way that it built up tension. and. It lacked a bit in the first third of this movie, and then it started kicking into gear, and then it was really engaging throughout. The only other thing, though, is there's a couple of sequences in the third act that are, I feel like, sloppily done to the point that they're jarring and kind of takes you out of the tone of the film. And there's people laughing in the theater with me about where this film goes in terms of some of the sequences and I think they're kind of taken aback with how this shifts and where this film winds up going and from a tonal perspective that's an issue if you're having audiences laugh at the fact that this goes to places so quickly and it, I feel like it could have been handled a little bit better with a little more finesse but there are some powerful sequences in this film that really hit you and really build tension and that is a plus. From the writing, the story is an interesting story. And I'm going to try not to compare this film as much to the other film, but they cut out a lot of stuff that made the other film a lot more intriguing with aspects of perversion and incestual relationships and dealing with slavery. And those are some really heavy topics and themes to deal with. And they just cut them off from this and makes this film a little more streamlined. So it might not, it might feel a little more focused, I guess, but it kind of takes away some of the intrigue and some of the deeper things that this story is trying to say. And that kind of bothered me. The dialogue is very period accurate and feels really natural. And in terms of the characters, because you don't get to feel a whole lot of their motivations or really see into a lot of these characters, some of them feel pretty flat. There's a decent amount of the young girls in this film that are just like, blah. But there's a couple of the characters that do get to stand out. And I'll talk about them in terms of the performances as well. But it feels like some of the talent was kind of wasted in this film. In terms of the cinematography by Philippe Le Sword, this is a beautiful film, so well shot, breathtaking, and what they do with the saturation in this makes this feel very traditional and feels like this could have been made a couple of decades ago, which is interesting, and how it looks looks very vintage, and I thought that was done in a fantastic way to go along with the lighting in this film is really well utilized, and a lot of the sequences are by candlelight and look beautiful, and Examples of films like uh, Barry Lyndon using just candlelight in certain sequences and all natural light in The Revenant can be such a powerful thing 
and that kind of elevated some of the scenes in this film and overall the shots were breathtaking and some of them were held and were so well utilized to build up tension and I brought this up when I talked about It Comes at Night, but you can take certain shots from this and use them as art on their own, and I think that's the, and I mentioned this before, I feel like that's one of the highest honors you could say about a cinematographer, is their shots and their framing is that beautiful as it's art on its own, and that's really inspiring, and that film has this. This film, in terms of the sound, the sound mixing and the editing was so well done because you hear the cannon fire in the background and understand the background and the landscape that this story is taking place in, the backdrop. And just this, the sound of cicadas, this whole entire movie, makes you really feel like you're in there. There's not a whole lot of music in it, but when it is Laura Cartman and Phoenix who composed this film, is more tones than actual music and they're used to great effect when they decide to use them and that's an impressive thing because i love no country for old men that movie has no music in it so you could really make a fantastic film that way but this film does decide to use some music and in a great way when it needs to and it really needs to elevate something in terms of the performances colin farrell does a fantastic job of showing some range in this film and it was very interesting because he's taking on a role that Clint Eastwood did and you don't really get that same vibe from the two of them this felt like a very different character than that one and you do legitimately feel for him because of Colin Farrell's performance and you're not quite sure what his motivations are and that's an interesting thing Nicole Kidman is powerful and intriguing and there's some layer of mystery going on in her performance and her character feels like she's always hiding something behind this facade of this southern woman and it's very interesting what she's able to do in this film and Kristen Dunst I feel like she didn't have that much to do to be perfectly honest and she did a fine job Elle Fanning added some layers to a pretty flat character and to say so pretty seductive with how she acts and there's a sequence where a lot of these young actresses get to play off of Colin Farrell in a dinner sequence that's really impressive um Angry Rice who's from the Nice Guys and I loved her in that she was pretty wasted in this film but one young actress who really gets to dig into this film is Una Lawrence, who's from Bad Moms and Southpaw and Peach Dragon, she did a fantastic job in this film, and she gets a lot more to do than some of the other characters, and you really feel for her, and she does a fantastic job of making you connect with her. In terms of this film, by the end, I felt a little unsatisfied with how it played out in terms of the motivations and how things play out. But overall, I thought it was a very interesting and intriguing film that will keep your attention as long as you can make it through that first third that lacks a little bit of oomph. But overall, it is a very, it's a very different kind of story and kind of takes you to a place that you might not expect. And I'm going to give the 2017 version of The Beguiled a B.